All right, I want you to imagine a critical job at your company. Every single night, it takes eight full hours to complete. Now, what if you could take that eight-hour marathon and shrink it down to just 25 minutes? We're not talking about a small tweak here. We're talking about a complete game changer. So let's dive in and see exactly how a team pulled off this incredible feat. For this explainer, we're going to be breaking down a really fantastic blog post from the engineering team over at Zerota. They were super transparent about their journey in rebuilding a crucial piece of their system, and it gives us this amazing real-world look at how you solve a massive scaling problem. And this is the result of that journey. You're looking at a transformation from a grueling eight-hour process to a lightning-fast 25-minute one. The big question is, how, right? How do you even find that kind of performance gain? Well, that is exactly what we're going to unpack. Now, to really appreciate the challenge here, you have to get your head around the scale. We are talking about generating over one and a half million PDFs every single day. And these aren't just any old documents. These are digitally signed, legally regulated contract notes for financial transactions. This is a high stakes, high volume operation for sure. Okay, so to understand how they built the new, super fast system, we first have to understand the old one. Let's take a look at the original setup and really pinpoint where things were going so wrong. The old stack was basically a chain of different tools working one after another. First, a Python app would generate some HTML from raw data. Then a tool called Puppeteer, which is basically a full-blown web browser running without a screen, would print that HTML into a PDF. After that, a Java tool would sign it, and finally, an email server would send it out. Each step adds time, but the real bottleneck was how it was all running. And here's the core issue. The entire process ran on one single massive server. This is what's known in the industry as vertical scaling. It's like when your computer gets slow, you just buy a more powerful one. But you can only do that for so long. Eventually, you hit a hard limit, both physically and financially. You just can't make one computer infinitely faster especially when your workload is exploding. So this led them to a fundamental shift in their whole philosophy. Instead of trying to make one thing bigger and faster, scaling up, they decided to go wider. It's a completely different and way more powerful approach to solving performance problems like this. And this brings us to the concept of horizontal scaling. The idea is pretty simple, actually. Instead of one giant expensive server, you use a whole fleet of smaller, cheaper servers, and you just divide the work among them. It's kind of like having 100 workers building a house instead of one super strong person trying to do everything alone. This approach is way more flexible and, in theory, can scale almost infinitely. So their new strategy was brilliant, especially for this type of task, which is what we call a batch job. They decided to embrace something called ephemeral infrastructure. So every single day, they'd spin up a huge temporary army of servers from scratch, throw all 1.5 million jobs at them at the same time, and then, and this is the best part, as soon as the last PDF was sent, they'd tear it all down. They only paid for the hardware for the 25 minutes it was actually running. Super cost-effective. Of course, to make this new philosophy a reality, they had to pick the absolute right tools for the job. And their choices here were totally crucial to getting those massive performance gains. So let's look at the evolution of just one part of the system, the PDF generator itself. They started with Puppeteer, which, as we know, was slow and heavy. So they moved to LaTeX, a really powerful typesetting system that gave them a 10x speed boost right away. But it had its own issues with memory and debugging. This search for the perfect tool eventually led them to a new, modern alternative called Typest. And Typest? Well, Typest was a total game changer. To give you some perspective, for a huge 2,000-page document, LaTeX took around 18 minutes to compile. Types did the same job in about one minute. It was also a tiny little program, which meant their servers could start up way faster, and it gave developers clear error messages. That last part is a huge deal for day-to-day -day work. But as is often the case in engineering, solving one problem just reveals the next one. With all these servers working in parallel, they were now creating something like 7 million temporary files every single run. All the different workers needed to access these files fast. So the question became, how do you build a shared storage system that can handle that kind of insane traffic without just becoming the new bottleneck? So they did what all good engineers do. They ran some benchmarks. They tested two big AWS services, EFS, which works kind of like a shared network drive, and S3, which is an object store built for massive scale. 
Now, you might think the shared file system EFS would be perfect, right? But the tests showed it had some serious latency issues and operational limits that just wouldn't work for them. S3, on the other hand, offered similar performance for this workload, but was way cheaper and way more scalable. The choice was pretty clear. But then they hit another wall. S3 started throwing rate limit errors. See, even though S3 is massive, if you send way too many requests to files that all start with the same name or prefix, all of those requests get funneled to the same internal partition inside S3's infrastructure. They were accidentally creating a huge traffic jam inside of Amazon's cloud. The solution was beautifully simple. Think of the file prefixes like lanes on a highway. Instead of everyone trying to cram into one lane, they created 10 fixed predictable prefixes, like 1-TMP PDF, 2-TMP PDF, and so on. This simple change was like telling S3, hey, spread these files out across 10 different partitions for me. It was like opening up 10 new lanes on the highway, and it effectively multiplied their data throughput by 10. So at this point, they have their fast workers and their scalable storage. Now they just needed a conductor to manage the whole orchestra, something to deploy the code, manage all those servers, and just make sure everything ran smoothly. And that's where orchestration comes in. They chose a tool called Nomad to manage everything. And the whole process was automated in three simple steps. At the start of the job, a single command provisions all the servers and infrastructure. Then, Nomad automatically deploys all of their worker applications onto those servers. And finally, once the job is done, another command just tears everything down. Clean, simple, and fully automated. And deep inside their Nomad configuration was this one simple but really powerful line. Type equals system. This one little instruction tells Nomad to guarantee that a copy of their worker app is running on every single server in the group. This ensures that no machine is ever sitting idle. You're getting the absolute maximum performance from the infrastructure that you're paying for. And all of this, this brings us back to that incredible final result. The combination of horizontal scaling, picking the right tools like types, using cloud services smartly like they did with us three, and clean orchestration with Nomad. That's what gets you this, from 480 minutes all the way down to just 25. So what can we all learn from this incredible engineering story? Let's try and summarize the key principles here that you might be able to apply to your own projects. First, if you have a workload you can split up, always think about scaling out, not up. Second, you have to benchmark your tools. The obvious choice isn't always the best one. Third, really understand how your cloud services work under the hood. Knowing about those S3 prefixes was a massive unlock for them. Fourth, for these kinds of bursty workloads, ephemeral, temporary infrastructure is your best friend for saving money. And finally, sometimes the big, complex tools aren't the answer. Don't be afraid to find or build a small, lightweight tool that does one thing really, really well. And that leaves us with one last thought. You know, this isn't just a story about generating PDFs. It's a whole new way of thinking about computation. So the question I want to leave you with is this. What slow, clunky legacy system in your world is just waiting to be broken apart and reimagined with this kind of distributed, efficient, and ephemeral architecture?